Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, should I always favor composition over inheritance? So let's get into it. Well, this is one of those extremish questions that I like to say is, well, usually the voice of experience is not to say always. I, I, it's very rare that I hear somebody who is truly, truly experienced in something who says always. I mean, the all, like the, usually the giveaway that somebody knows what they're talking about is it depends. If they say it depends, it usually is a good sign. So I'm going to say it depends, but anywho, this idea of composition over inheritance is pretty much a textbook, ex it's a textbook example from every single object-oriented programming book I think I've ever read on best practices. It's like, I think it's like one of those universal truths. It's probably embedded in some, like, in, like, it's nestled into the core heart, like, in, in uh, object-oriented programming. And the reason why this is, is because a lot of people have realized over the years how how absolutely horrible a code base can turn out if you do inheritance incorrectly. And that's the th key word here, doing it incorrectly. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you see, I'm one of those weird people who will make a statement and that statement is usually fairly unpopular or other. Some people that you kind of just nod around and says, yeah, of course, Red, you're right about that, but they don't really understand what it, what it actually means. And that is that you can write good code in anything and you can write shitty code in anything as well. And the kind of the mentality and the thought I have behind this is that, I mean, anything is possible. It all comes down to risk. Like how likely are you to mess something up or how likely are you to get something right? In other words, the trickier a concept is, it doesn't matter if a super genius who knows absolutely everything about it can make it work in a flawless and perfect manner for one specific use case. If you try to do the same thing, and unless you have the same sort of circumstances that person has, you can still fuck it up. Just as a thing that is um, absolutely horrible from the perspective of somebody who either mis misuses it or has a lot of bad experiences, I mean, just because a few people have found that this is a really common problem, it doesn't necessarily mean that that means that it's just universally a bad idea. I'll give you an example, or rather the best example I can give of kind of the differences of how I see this. So let's talk about composition over inheritance just uh, fundamentally. And I'll give you two examples when I think one makes more sense than the other, because I do think that there is a situation when one does make more sense than the other. I'm not saying that one is more common than the other. Composition is... I mean, saying always favor composition is a bit strong, but I would say, like the thing I said earlier, favor composition over inheritance. That doesn't mean that you always go with composition. It just means that it's usually a good choice given that you understand the problem that you are solving and the impact that you can potentially get from making this trade-off. So let's give you an example. Let's talk about composition. Let's say that you and I, we sit down and we decide that, all right, we're going to add a user service. We're going to create a service in our code that is going to handle user logic. And said and done, we create a user service that can create a user, update a user, get a user, delete a user, all of that good stuff, right? And then we just, you know, time kind of passes and we get to this point where, hey, one of our stakeholders come in and then they say, Hey guys, um, we're going to have to send some emails out to these users. Uh, we need to be able to send emails to users. Now, we're put in a position now where usually what people will do in order to solve this problem is that they will either create a new user service or they will add the logic of a user, like of dispatching like an email like they create the email service or they kind of just put the logic for dispatching that email on the user service. Now, this is a scenario where composition makes a lot of sense because inherently the models are not considered to be, there's not a strong coupling between the models. And that's the thing that is most important when I, at least in my world, when you decide between inheritance or composition, it has to do with how well your model fits into the well, how well does it fit? To, how, how tight is the coupling? I mean, 
in this scenario, there's no reason, like a user's, uh, the user service or users, uh, the logic that regards uh, is regarded to into a user, it has nothing to do with an email service. It's just that you need to be able to dispatch an email as a part of some logic that is tied into the user. So having either the email service depend on the user service or vice versa, having the email service handle all the logic that has to do with emails and all that good stuff and just having a method that is specific to the needs of the user service is a very good idea. And then they simply, you can include the user service in the email service as a dependency. And then you can kind of, you, and then you kind of have your logic there because you don't want to use inheritance here because that would make, be absolute insanity because if you inherit, you basically could couple two things that have absolutely nothing to do with each other. I mean, use, users have nothing to do with emails. It's just, that, I mean, because emails is this cross cutting thing that needs to be included in quite a few other places. And that's gonna, that can get really ugly really quickly if you start inheriting from the user service into the order service and then the product service and the user service and whatever service. It, you create a really strong coupling between something that should really be loosely coupled. Let's flip this now and talk about inheritance. So let's say for the sake of argument, let's continue on this path about users. So let's, uh, one of the most common models that you will have is the user model. You usually have a user of some sort, right? And you create a user model, like it has a name and an age and like all this good stuff that we see in all these, hey, this is all your first day of programming videos. And then a little while later, a stakeholder comes in, your boss comes in and says, guys, we're going to have to support an, um, an admin user as well, like a role, an admin role of some sort. Now, this is a different story. You see, the coupling between a user and an admin is extremely high because a admin is very likely just a entity within your system that is a almost perfect match to the user. It's very likely that you will only add some type of extra like enhanced information of a user in order to create the admin. And what's nice about that is that this is a per, the models are almost identical. It's just an extension, a per, pure extension. You're not overriding things. You're not trying to change the inherent, like the functionality of something on the user. If you're doing that, you're already in something uh, in composition land in my world, because just enhancing something, that is a very good example in my world where inheritance makes a lot of sense. And what's beautiful about this is that because they are actually co co coupled together, like you actually have this inheritance going on, you can leverage polymorphism, which means that a lot, most of, the, most likely all the logic that is relevant for a user will be relevant for an admin as well. You can get around this problem using interfaces and other ma methods, but I think that this is a very clean and nice situation for when inheritance makes a lot of sense because you can get back a lot of you don't have to redefine a lot of code in order to make this happen so as long as the model fits uh, that is th that perfect of a fit i think inheritance makes a lot of sense so what i want you to take away from this is basically that the thing to consider when we talk about inheritance versus composition is to ask yourself what type of model are you dealing with if the model is a perfect fit in other words, the coupling is extremely high between these two entities, then might, it might be a good idea to just use inheritance. If you're overriding stuff or in something of this nature, you're trying to redefine what things mean in the subtype or the subclass, then composition is probably the way to go because then the coupling isn't, uh, it, it should be looser. So really think about the model that you are defining. If there is a really tight coupling, inheritance might be a good strategy. If there's a loose coupling and you want to keep the logic separated, go with composition. Have a great day.